Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. What did he say? Oh, we'll come too, they said. So they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. They caught what? Nothing. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. He called out, fellows, have you caught any fish? They replied, no. What did, how did they reply? No. Then he said, throw out your net on the right-hand side of the boat, and you'll get some. So they did, and they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. How many fish? So many. So many. I want to share my testimony with you all and tell you all how this correlates with this scripture. Um, as I was growing up, first off, um, when I was a little girl, one of the first images that I saw were unhealthy relationships. Um, my mom and my dad, they were married um, at the time, but my dad was never at home. Come to find out, he was actually with who's my stepmom today. She actually just passed away a year ago. So I grew up with my mom in the house, um, and my parents, anytime my dad was there, the relationship was terrible. When I my first day in kindergarten, I remember my mom chasing my dad around for butcher knife, and I figured, you know, everything was okay because the next morning he was still alive. Um, my dad has got restraining orders. A lot of time, they've always fought, argued. He used to abuse my mom and everything like that. All my friends, their parents were divorced too, and they didn't see healthy relationships. So, all my life, I've looked upon relationships between a man and a woman as not stable, not steady, and unhealthy. Also growing up, I was very insecure. I don't know if any of your parents used to do this when you were little, but my mom used to, when I was growing up, buy my shoes a size bigger so that I could grow into it. Did any of y'all parents do that? Yeah. Okay. So, but my mom went to the extreme instead. So, I'm a seven and a half to this day. At seven and a half, eight, I'm 26 years old. I was in the sixth grade, and my mom got me a size nine tennis shoe. Yes. Thank you. But I was going to grow into that. And I was shorter and a lot skinnier than I am now. So I got picked on a lot about having big feet. A lot. And then because they were big, I used to walk like this because my feet wouldn't fit into it. So they called me, you know, duck feet and penguin and all that type of stuff. And then I also got picked on. I used to get picked on too. My, they used to call me Tweety Bird. They used to say I have a big head and a small body. Say to me. So I used to wear, and my kids now they call me the brat dolls because they have the big head and the small body. But I used to wear bangs, like I didn't stop wearing bangs until I got to um, college because I was so insecure about my forehead and my head and my feet and my size. And so because I was, um, I'm petite now, but I was a lot skinnier then. So I used to wear very revealing clothes, very tight clothes because I figured I didn't have much, so I might as well show what I got. So I was very insecure. That's not a good thing. I was very, very insecure. Um, I was very lustful. The, um, I had gotten a tuck with, attacked with lust at a very young age, so I was into a lot of perverted things. Um, I was addicted to porn and stuff like that in high school. I was a hot mess. From the outside, you couldn't see it. Nobody would know, because I could paint the picture so well that I had it all together. But inside, I was terrible. I wanted to kill myself several times because I thought I was crazy. Because um, I was unique, no one really understood me sometimes, I was different, I would hear stuff in my head, and so once I actually tried to take my life, so I was, I was a very hot mess. And basically all my life I had been that way, so I thought that there was going to be nothing different for me. I had tried to stop those things, but I couldn't stop. I had tried to stop thinking those ways, but I couldn't. So I just said in my mind that since this is the way I am, this is the way I'm always going to be. And this relates really well to that scripture because it says in the beginning how they went fishing and how when they went out to the boat, they caught nothing. All my life, I was doing that with relationships. I have been in abusive relationships and everything. And I figured since that's the way relationships were, that's just what I was always going to get were bad men, men who treated me. Um, the way my dad treated my mother, that's all I was going to get was nothing. I was never going to experience real love. Since I was insecure about myself, you know, I figured that that's just the way I was always going to be in people's eyesight or whatnot. Just an insecure person, not pretty, not beautiful enough. I didn't deserve, I didn't deserve enough. Empty. With the porn and the lust and stuff like that. I did those things because I didn't have enough faith in God at the time because I didn't have a relationship with them to believe that I would be able to have something like that with a husband that would be better than anything else in the whole wide world, any porn site or anything like that. I didn't believe that because I was empty. And that's the way my mindset was, was empty. 
And a lot of you all came just like that. It says they were fishing all night long. Some of you all your life have had that empty mentality. Some of you in this room, you might not be smoking that weed now or smoking those cigarettes now, but right before you came, you was doing that. And a lot of times that happens because we're trying to cover up something. And we're trying to do it ourselves. The disciples, they did it themselves. They didn't depend on Christ. They did it themselves. And so before you came, you might have been doing drugs to cover up something, doing that yourself. You might have been having sex to fill that void of love. You were doing that yourself. You might have had a bad attitude. And therefore, now you, you have a bad reputation and all those type of things and all that. And you were trying to do that yourself. The awesome thing about Jesus, though, is that when Jesus came into the picture, they had more than what they could ever imagine. He said, throw out your net on the right-hand side of the boat, and you'll get some. And so they did, and they couldn't haul the net because there were so many fish in it. It's amazing how you can be one way, but when Jesus comes, he can change that whole thing. He can change everything. And I was that way all my life. I'm dead up serious with you. All my life, I thought I was going to be that way, and I was just going to have all these secrets. And I hated myself. But when I gave my life to Christ in college, it was my sophomore year. When I tell you all that stuff just went, God took all of that away. And he changed my mindset. I now said, oh my gosh, I, I don't have to think that way anymore. I can actually believe that there is a man out there for me, and he's going to love me. He's going to be faithful, honest, and just, and not hurt me, but love me more than anybody next to God. I believed that, you know what, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah, my head may be big. Yeah, I may have long toes. Oh, well, God made me this way for a reason. Oh, well. So I got accepted. I got to live with myself. I got accepted. I am beautiful. Okay? I, had to, I had to get that faith. I had got that security because I wasn't leaning on me anymore. I was getting these things through Christ. And see, the awesome thing about y'all being at this camp is that y'all, some of you all came with that empty mentality of doing stuff yourself all the time, all your life. But you learned here at camp to let Christ lead you, to let Christ guide you. You learn here at camp that only Christ can fill those voids. You learn here at camp that Christ, only Christ can love you more than anybody else in this whole wide world. Only Christ will be that faithful, faithful person when everybody's turned their backs on you. Only Christ will give you that fulfillment, that everlasting joy. Because some of y'all got some hard situations. I know some of y'all stories. I've heard some, what some of y'all go through. But when you let Christ lead, you won't get empty anymore. You'll get more than what you can ever imagine. And it reads at the end of the story. I really like the way this, this ends. It ends saying this. Then the disciples, Jesus loved, said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon, Peter heard, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic, jumped into the water, and headed to the shore. The others stayed with the boat and pulled the, pulled the loaded net to the shore. But they were only about 100 yards from the shore. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them. Fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. Bring some of the fish you've just caught, Jesus said. So Simon Peter went aboard, and they dragged the net to shore. There were over 153 large fish in the net, and it had not torn. Now come and have breakfast, Jesus said. Some of you are going to go back to some hard situations. But the thing is, the disciples, since the disciples listened to Christ, they were able to, one, get more than what they could ever imagine, and they were able to, two, be able to enjoy breakfast with Christ. If you lean on Christ, if you keep these things that you've learned here at camp and the things that your leaders have been telling you throughout the year, and you lean on Christ, you're going to have some awesome things happen in your life. And then the situations, every situation is going to become complete and full. It says at the end of this, now come and have breakfast. God had breakfast prepared for them right after that. Every situation you're dealing with, it may not happen soon, but God has it prepared and already worked out. And if you leave here and you depend on Christ like they did, you will see at the end of every road that you walk down, he'll be just like this. Now come and enjoy some breakfast. Thank you so much for being obedient. Thank you so much for listening. Come and enjoy this, what I have for you. Because you made it through and you listened. I challenge you, when you go home, don't go on the empty side of the boat. Don't go to that empty mentality. Stay with Christ. Keep the stuff that you have learned. Hold on to that. And I promise you, you will have more than you can ever imagine in Christ Jesus. And nothing, nothing can ever compare to that. Thank you.